Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Trogly's Guitar Show. Another Trogly Vlogly unboxing and boxing video. So, we've got a few good guitars coming in today, as well as a few of them going out. But let's start with this one that I think you guys will be rather happy to see. I'm voiceovering this because, well, the background was a little bit too loud during this segment. But this was the end result of Trade Tuesday. beautiful Les Paul R8. 1958 reissue. The video for this one is already out. As you can see, it was a little bit dusty when I got it, but we cleaned it up and it looks great. It sounds great. Not necessarily my favorite guitar in the world, but you know, as just a standard rock guitar, something you take out to gig, it's perfect for that. All right, now we got a couple more to unbox here. I'll start with this one. This is an instrument that I've talked down upon before, but it was this guy's listing. He did a fantastic job in writing it that it convinced me to actually try one of these things out because I didn't realize it had a different type of body wood than like one of these instruments would normally have. So let's go ahead and see what's in here. He did a really nice job packing that. This is a good little piece of advice. If you ever are shipping something with one of these combo locks in it, make sure you let the buyer know what the combination is if it was ever set. You don't necessarily have to tape this down and uh, write it on there like this guy did, though very helpful, just sending the buyer a message. And then they can also look it up later in case they forget and they've lost this. But what is inside here that's made of something it shouldn't be? What have I made fun of in the past? Well, you can't quite tell yet, but it's the SG3. Okay, so I believe this was Guitar of the Week, but it's essentially an SG Special, but they give it single coil pickups. And it almost seems like nobody wants these things. I see them for sale quite often for very cheap, and I mean, they don't ever sell too incredibly fast or anything, but I didn't realize there were actually three different versions of this instrument. This one is made of ash, so I'm really excited to demo this guitar for you guys. And I'll teach you more about the differences between the models in that video. And one last unboxing here. It's a Gibson box, so I wonder if there's a, a Gibson in it. But the real question is, is it a new Gibson guitar? I'm already gonna spoil a surprise. Yes, yes it is. So I've been buying most of my new stuff from Sweetwater, right? And that's mainly because they're local to me. If there's an issue with the guitar, I can just drive it back. You don't have to worry about shipping it or anything like that. And by the way, I never buy a guitar planning to return it. The only ones out of the 2019 runs that I have returned were the SGs because they wouldn't stay in tune. It was kind of funny. Somebody had messaged me. They're like, hey, I bought this guitar brand new, but it's the exact same one in your video. What's the deal with that? So I was kind of looking for a new dealer to buy from. I talked to Chicago Music Exchange a little bit, but I still couldn't quite get the price I wanted on this model. But then this one showed up on Reverb, reached out to the shop, and lo and behold, they like my channel, they like what I do, and they've treated me the best that I've been treated out of any dealer I've ever talked to. But if it wasn't for them, it wouldn't have been possible to review this model. The Les Paul Modern. I decided to go with blue because that's what you guys voted on. Personally, I would probably would have went with red or maybe that graphite pearl. You might have already seen the video on this one. I'm going to work on it as soon as I'm finished here and teach you all about it. But this is me unboxing it for the first time. But I'm not going to talk about it too much. You can check out the full review and demo for that. Haha, -ha, I tricked you. There's another one. If I'm honest with you guys, this wasn't packed very well. Do you hear how it shakes? I mean, hopefully it came out okay. But I guess we'll find out, right? All right, see, this looks like standard Gibson packaging to me. So they've got this to support the guitar a little bit and then just a little bit of this bubble wrap stuff. All 
Alright, so what is inside of this case? It looks like it's brand new, right? One of the more exciting 2019s that I'm happy that I got. Uh oh. <laughs> That's a scary way to unbox it. This is the new 50 standard P90s. I decided to go with this one instead of the humbuckered version because, well, let's face it, the 50s and 60s standards, they're essentially the same thing, it just comes down to preference. Do you like the big neck, the small neck, and which type of magnets you like in your pickups? So, <laughs> I'm kind of scared to look at the back of the headstock. Well, it looks like it arrived safely anyways. It's got a nice color to the back. It's kind of a lighter hue than I was expecting, but it's got some nice dancing to it. This is a nice guitar, but the thing with this one is it's really heavy. So if you like a chunky Les Paul, you might like this one. But as far as you know, once I put this one on the market, I'm sure a lot of people will pass on this 10 pound beast. But man, look at this fretboard. Are you guys seeing this? Definitely gonna have to cover this in my first impressions. That is the freshest and darkest looking rosewood board I've ever seen. And now we have a few instruments to pack up. Most of these are the brand new models that we'd been featuring. And it's great that people have been helping me out by buying these. It really does encourage me to buy more of the new models to feature them. And I do plan on doing most of the interesting new ones. But for now, the DC base is getting packed up and ready to go to its new home where it will be loved and enjoyed. Our next one to pack up here, the Double Cut Special. The next one we have to pack here was a consignment piece. If you're interested in me documenting your guitar, helping you sell it, you can check out my website for more information on that. But this is the 1967 EB3 that I had a great time documenting, learning about, tearing apart, looking at all its parts. It really was a very eye-opening episode, and I feel I understand this model more now that I've tried one. So let's go ahead and continue watching it being packed. And since I received the R8 earlier, I guess I could have to ship out the Firebird X now, right? That's kind of the way I do trade-ins to my business since I'm a very reputable person on the internet. I can't just steal some guy's guitar and run away with it because, I mean, I'm held accountable in more than one way besides just my code of ethics. But I also do the reverb suggested way where you buy each other's instruments on reverb. That way you're both protected. It just depends what the buyer's most comfortable with and if they want to save money or not. The hardest thing about packing a Firebird X is the accessory case because it's rather heavy and usually it's hard to find a box that's large enough. So for this one, I basically just leave the flaps open and add an extra top. That's a great little trick to know about to get a larger box out of your smaller one. So now I've got some bad news for you guys. The vlog series is gonna take a short like week, week or two break because once again, this dumb GoPro camera has to be sent back because it will not connect to any computer. Nothing can recognize it. So the first one had overheating issues. This one still overheats and won't connect to the computer. So I don't think I could suggest GoPro products, but hey, maybe third time's the charm. So I will see you guys again in a few weeks, I guess. 
All right. Thank you, Troglodytes, for watching, and we will see you tomorrow on the next regular episode. Take care.